All right, welcome to day two of our Linear Relationships Lab, um, where we're, we're starting to model motion for the first time. And in particular, we're looking at, uh, again, linear patterns. Uh, when looking at distance versus time, with a constant velocity uh, and, and that is key again the constant velocity part is very important so uh, day two here I, I've added it to our go formative assignment so if you already submitted it yesterday you simply have to reopen it and you should see the day two edition uh, that I've added it's got an embedded slideshow and then a question three and question four Four, that of course are all related to uh, the lab from yesterday and the biggest reason I did this was that a lot of students I saw did day one uh, pretty quickly and uh, did it just fine did it well so I really wanted to make sure we could continue our learning today and uh, for for some of you hopefully it'll deepen your understanding uh, before the weekend I, I really don't think the addition will take too much longer um but linear patterns and making predictions that's really why we're doing all this uh, we want to be able to kind of make predictions about the future so the biggest thing we'll be discussing is this y equals mx plus b and hopefully this is something that you've seen in math before uh, would be my guess maybe in science before but this is the mathematical equation that represents a line. Uh, and, and again, from the, the first day of the lab, if, if you've done that, uh, you should see that our data, when, when I, I'll go ahead and move this to the side real quick. Uh, you have our data table, and this is the data you should have gotten from the lab. And it should have created a graph like this, uh, with time on the x-axis and distance on the y-axis. And uh, again, this is distance versus time with a constant velocity, representing a linear relationship. And you might be able to guess, but we call it a linear relationship because it makes a straight line. Okay, this, this line could do all sorts of things. It could go in curves and ups and downs. It could stop, um, but it doesn't. It, it goes in a straight line. And it doesn't just stop here at this five seconds. That's where our data stops. But we could make predictions about the future. What would be at six seconds and seven seconds and, you know, a hundred seconds or uh, six minutes away? You'd have to convert the time. But uh, you could make a prediction based on this relationship that we saw. So, uh, again, that is why we're doing it. That is why it's called a linear relationship. You get this straight line between distance and time with a constant velocity. So going back to here, our, our equation for a straight line is this. And so theoretically then we could solve for unknown variables to either figure out how much time or how much distance uh, depending on the other situation or other circumstances. So with this y equals mx plus b, uh, you, you hopefully remember at least hearing about it in math but you probably talked about it a little bit differently. And so I want to make sure we understand how to look at this in relation to science. Uh, earlier, we talked about independent and dependent variables yesterday, uh, and that's in the slideshow above. But uh, the Y equals your dependent variable. So this Y on the Y axis is your dependent variable. And so in this case, that'd be distance. Your M, uh, would be your slope uh, and we'll talk about that again here in a minute but your slope in this situation is your velocity the, that is constant x uh, is your independent variable so our x is your independent variable which in this circumstances is time okay so i could plug any number of time into this and solve for our distance figure out how far uh, it's traveled um, and then your b Okay, this is your y-intercept, right? But uh, in this case, that's, that's where basically the data starts, okay? Uh, so in this case, it's zero. Uh, but again, whoop, using this example here, 
okay? Y equals distance, M equals your velocity, okay? So our velocity in this lab was two meters per second. So we, we take that numerical number, that number, uh, two. So in this situation, this lab, our velocity of two is, is our slope. Then we have X for time, okay? And then we're using seconds. So you wanna make sure when we use it in this lab that we convert it to seconds and not have it in minutes or hours and that kind of stuff. And then B is your starting point. I kind of mentioned it just now, but in the moving man lab uh, simulator, the moving man starts at position zero, zero meters. So uh, our B value today uh, in this lab is a zero which is nice because when you add zero to anything, it doesn't do anything, so you can kind of get rid of it. So then again, uh, our, our, taking us back to our research question, what is the relationship between distance and time of an object that has a constant velocity? And, and we, we just stated that, so that is a linear relationship. This also, is one of our pre-assessment questions. So hopefully we're gonna hear this over and over. And if we were to take that pre-assessment again, you would be able to answer linear relationship. Uh, and again, constant velocity is the important piece there. So back to our hypothesis as well. How far, uh, you know, hypothesize how far the man in the fat simulation moving at two meters per second will travel if we let them walk for six minutes. So can we use y equals mx plus b to answer this question? Uh, and the answer is yes. So uh, going down to number three, this is the new question. I want you to use y equals mx plus b to help answer the original hypothesis. How far will the man travel moving at two meters per second if we let him walk for six minutes? And I, I've given you some hints. First, convert six minutes into seconds. Uh, and just a friendly reminder, 60 seconds equals one minute. Uh, so really you would do six times 60 to get six minutes worth of seconds. Then your slope is the man's velocity. Uh, I stated it just earlier, but that means your slope, your M value would be two. Then your B or your Y intercept is zero, and this is because that's where the man started, right? I, I stated that earlier. So you really don't have to worry about adding um, your, your B value there. And then you're solving for Y. Uh, and so based on what we just shared, Y equals two, uh, and again, parentheses means times, six minutes, uh, but you need to convert that to seconds. Or you, I, maybe I just kind of said it, six times 60. Okay, uh, that would give you your distance. Remember, Y is, is your distance in meters. Okay, so uh, I, I would like you to show your work uh, and then retry your hypothesis, but you don't need to go up and change your hypothesis. And then I want you to just kind of quickly and briefly, you know, did your answer to this question, uh, did it did it help you answer your original hypothesis? Did it match your original hypothesis or was it different? So then you can kind of explain yes or no. And, and I would like a why, why, like if it did not match, can you explain you know, well, this is what I was kind of thinking, but after doing, you know, this math, now, it, now you know, I see that it was wrong. Something like that, okay? Um, let me know if you have any questions.